Yeah, but I didn't get that that um, road alert thing. Is that oh. is that somewhere that was? Yeah, it should be. I, they were like with each other, but here how did that like? Did you get the main street one? Yeah. Hold on, is it in my packet? No, 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 no it's, it's separate. separate. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. I'm sorry, I had it. That's okay. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the October 13th, 2010 meeting of the Goffstown Board of Selectmen. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, uh, first off, we do have some announcements. The first one is from the Goffstown Police Department. Uh, the Goffstown Sewer Commission announces the continuation of sewer construction related to the ARA funded Mast Road Sewer Project. Construction is expected to last until mid December between Daniel Plummer Road and Larch Street. Mast Road will be open to all residential and business traffic throughout the day and to through traffic each night. Delays should be expected in the work zone as only one lane of alternating traffic flow can be accommodated. Daytime through traffic should use St. Anselm Drive as a detour route to avoid unnecessary delays which are expected Monday through Friday between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. Portions of night work may be scheduled to help reduce business and residential impacts. Separate traffic alerts will be issued if that occurs. And again, if you'd like to see the detour map, uh, please go to the town's website at www.goffstown.com or you can call Bob Marchesault. Uh, HTA inspector at 603-234-0312 with any questions. Thank you for your patience during this very, very busy construction season. Uh, our next announcement uh, is from the Goffstown Main Street program. And just want to let everybody know that this coming weekend, the giant pumpkins are coming. So it'll be our pumpkin regatta way off in regatta. Uh, there's also, we're also being visited by a national magazine during the regatta weekend. They will be filming video and taking still photography shots to use in their print and online media. Uh, we want to look our very best. This means please have your staff clean, uh, cleaning trash from the sidewalks all week long and all weekend long. We work hard to keep the trash down, but you can help too. Uh, and this is uh, to the uh, local businesses, uh, so if they can make the, make the town uh, look good. We're going to be uh, spotlighted by a national magazine. In addition, they are planting 1,600 daffodils in downtown. Uh, so if anyone has any space, whether it be uh, business or residential, uh, they are planning these for the 250th anniversary next year. And there will be uh, trick-or-treating on Halloween from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and that's all we really have here. All right, are there any, any other announcements? No? We're good? Uh, next is public comment. I don't see anyone from the public. So we're going to, uh, on our agenda, we have some a non-public session, which we expect will take about 10, Scott, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll enter into non-public session starting uh, now at 6.05. We should be back at around 6.20 to 6.25 is when we'll resume. I need a motion to go into non-public session uh, per RSA 91-A, colon 3, Roman numeral 2, E. So that is for legal. That's uh, seconded by, who, you Phil. moved it, and Phil, Phil seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yes. 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 Okay. And we'll go next door to do that. resume our public session. I apologize for the non-public taking longer than expected. Uh, we'll start back up with our town administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And your weekly meeting schedule is in your packet. Planning board is tomorrow evening and also Solid Waste Commission. Your consensus folder tonight includes AP warrants, MS60A, which is the auditor option and schedule. The NHAAO election ballot, uh, Scott Bollett is running for director at large. Uh, notification to the inhabitants of the town of the November 2nd elections. An intent to cut on map 11, lot 12. An event permit app, two event permit applications. 
Halloween Parade for Gosstown School District on October 29th. Halloween Ball for Rotary Club on October 30th. And you have eight employee status reports. And that's it for the consensus. You have the um, motion to approve. Yeah, well, per permission to add the um, motion to hire to the okay. employee status reports. Okay, motion okay. to approve. Seconded by? Second. Selecting Camposano. All those in favor say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you. Um, we got a deliberative session. The school will hold its deliberative session on Saturday, February 5th at 10 a.m. with a snow date on, on the following Saturday, uh, February 12th. The gym is, um, did we get confirmation on the gym availability? Um, from Monday, February 7th, Wednesday, February 9th with a snow day of Thursday, February 10th. Which date would you prefer, Monday or Wednesday night? Monday, what do you, Monday everyone? Monday. Monday. Monday? Okay, we'll confirm that with the school. Uh, we did not hear back from LGC today. They were setting their rates, but uh, we hope to have that for your Monday meeting. Our community revitalization tax relief incentive, you'd ask for the backup material. They'll be in on um, the 25th okay. to do a presentation, and you have the most recent laws in your packet. We did receive uh, the tax rate certification. And the tax rate for 2010 is $22.91, which um, is less than originally anticipated. It's an increase of $1.24, I believe, over the previous year. So the board um, accepts this tax rates. And then uh, you also. Do we have a choice? <laughs> <coughs> Well, you just have to kind of uh, accept the certification, and then you have the property tax warrant also to accept tonight. You need a motion to accept? Motion to accept. The tax rate calculation, and I'll just read them off. And, and the, the warrant. I, yeah, I'll just do that. I'm going to do it separately. Okay. Um, uh, motion to accept, I need a motion to accept the DRA tax rate cal 2010 tax rate calculation as follows. Town rate, $8.95. Local school rate, uh, $10.57. School tax, state okay. school rate, uh, $2.30. County rate is $1.09 for a total of $22.91. have a motion okay. to accept that. Seconded by? Second. Second. Nick gets it by a hair. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Okay, next would be to accept the... Uh, Second half 2010 warrant. Need a motion for that. And we'll get, would you like to second that one? I'll second. Selecting second. Pierce seconds that one in fairness. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero again. And finally, um, well, before we get to that one, the, um, it was put in your signature folder today, the excessive recommendations for 2010 tax abatements. Um, and those are all listed in your yeah, those are thing. paper abatements, right? Yes. right? Okay, you need a motion for that. Do you have a second? Second. Yeah. Hey, we're too close to go. <laughs> Nick Selectman Camposano. It's a little quicker than you tonight. Trying to move along. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you. GPS equipment went out to bid and the following bids were received. We had budget of 47000 for this item. First bidder was Main Technical Source Warburton Mass for $17,366.19. Um, but with the options of training and extra battery, came out to $18,386.19. Keystone Precision in, uh, Instruments of Allenstown, Pennsylvania, $42,037.35. And the third bidder was East Point Lasers, Hooks at New Hampshire, 18650 um, Public Works Director recommends award to the low bidder main technical source for a Rachel GS09GNSS with <laughs> options for training and extra battery in the amount of $18,386.19. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I was just curious why we're that far off from our... Is that typical? Well, there is one bidder yeah, that was pretty close. Yeah, 42,000, but yeah. okay. Different models, I think. Yeah. Different items. All right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. 4-0. Aye. 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 
We did non-public. Yes, we did. And we'll do non-meeting well, stuff. And we, yeah, that's after. I have one more non-public that I can wait to the end of the night. Okay. No one here, out, other than the board, has to be present for it. And it will be under Land D. Land D. Land D. Land D. Land D. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're done with the town administrator's report. Yes, we are. Okay. We're almost back on track. Uh, select this discussion, and we'll have any uh, new business. New business. Oh. The old business. Yes, old business. Uh, Sue, if you would uh, lead into this one, um, I believe there's a resident on uh, 25 An Incline Ave that Incline wrote to Ave the board on September 6th. It was in your September 20th packet. Is concerned about the state of a culvert that runs underneath Four Road. And. Uh, the issue was if that culvert is fails, or should the town have some responsibility for improving the state of that culvert? Uh, there are not only the the person at 25 Incline, but there's six other houses on Incline Ave that would use or road to. Uh, access the public highway, Mountain Base Road. I went up to that location this morning with the uh, director of DPW. The culvert is uh, about 100 yards into Ore Road. It's 8-inch concrete. It appears to flow okay, um, but there's no water reaching it right now because it's dry. Um, has about 9 to 9 inches to 12 inches of cover over the culvert for the roadbed. Um, I believe the concern was if that culvert were to fail, um, the residents would have some difficulty uh, exiting uh, either by it being flooded or the culvert collapsing. And should the town have some responsibility to uh, maintain the culvert? It's Class 6 road, and we have no obligation to repair those roads. Um, question. There's a question here. Yes. Uh, I'm confused. The original letter that I saw from is it Mrs. Lackham? McComb, I believe. Mrs. Lackham was the construction of a berm which re oh. redirected the water so it didn't go into the culvert. Oh. Pass one of those down to suit. Um, there there was a, uh, on the property of Mr. Wilson, where the water would flow into that culvert on my diagram, uh, potentially, I, th I think Carl said there was a, a blockage at the inlet of that culvert. And Carl advised uh, the person, Mr. Wilson, to uh, um, remove the actual blockage because he's, he is uh, interfering with the flow of a natural stream, whether it's a culvert there or not. Right. So I mean, that's a and so that is, is this more of like a civil thing then? Is yes, that what you're so trying that to say between two parties, not really a town there's issue? My opinion here, uh, after viewing the situation this morning, there is no town role. Um, the uh, Mr. Wilson had earlier inquired about he would be willing to pay to lower the culvert so that. Presumably, it would drain his land better, which okay. is listen to this. If the town has no interest in this, yeah. then we should. That's it. Yeah, that's and we shouldn't it. even be you know, discussing possible yeah. solutions. If that's yeah. has that been concurred by our, the DPW director? Is, Sue, have you been involved in this decision at all? Or um, no, I just heard that they went out there today. Okay. Yes, and this is solely well, on private property. The, the culvert goes under a town road. It's a class six road, but it's a town road. My. Um, Correct. Mr. Chair, my, uh, my bottom <laughs> analysis on that, if you want to wrap it up, is that uh, um, the, the fact that if that culvert fails, whether it falls in or it is, um, flows over, unable to handle the water coming off the hillside, is, there's no role, for the, no role for the town 
to improve the situation is a class six road. And Mother Nature is just forming a natural drain line, whether there's a culvert there or not. Um, and I'm just it, curious, how did issue? you arrive at that? You just we, we know it's a, we know it's a class six road. We have no responsibility right. to maintain okay. class and that, six that road. I understand, but and we're sure that it's a class and six road. There is a okay. some sort of a natural drain line through that area, whether there was a culvert there or not. Okay. Any other questions for Selectman Pierce? All right. So there's. Thank no, you very much no for. So we respond to Mrs. Lancome that uh, Mr. Wilson was advised to um, not out. redirect right. and remove the blocks. And he, civil matter. And he has he done did. that. Okay. In any future issues, you know, this is an issue between you know private the civil issue. Yeah, private that landowners. The board of selectmen yeah. is being asked to solve. Right. If if the resident at some point in the future wished to improve that culvert, that would be DES permitting. Um, only at the you would have still have to seek approval by this board, yes. as well as DES permitting, because it affects wetlands upstream and downstream. Correct. All right. I appreciate uh, you going out there. Thank you. Um, any other old business? I'm hearing any. Uh, committee reports. Uh, 250th anniversary committee met last week. Um, uh, Tom Sousa of Sousa Signs is donating a couple of signs for the uh, 250th anniversary, mainly for fundraising for fireworks. Uh, the committee uh, determined that um, they wanted to proceed with fireworks, but it would not come from any. Ha it had to come from private. Donations, so they're starting a fundraising drive, and Tom has Tom Sousa has offered to assist with providing signs. The the committee will be coming to us shortly in terms of placement of those signs on town land, and I will bring uh, you know, so if we can maybe brainstorm on what are some good places to to put that. Um, we were talking about perhaps at the to, I think isn't it town land at the corner of 114, 114A, Danis Park Road. Where those political signs are, that's not town owned land. That's state right away. Okay. The Next um, to that ranch? Yeah. Yeah, the that's state. state right away. Uh, what about the, the trap, those um, islands? At that's possible, right? That's the, the state ones right that away. are by, the ones that are in. Um, 114 and 114A? No. No, right, in, right outside the village. The island where the Street? gardens what? at Pleasant, Pleasant Street? Street? Yeah, Pleasant Street. Those, are, those islands? Uh, the only one that isn't town is the one right in front of the uh, Lubies. Right. That's right. theirs. The Lubies. But other than that, that's that's right. an area for what possibly to put one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have another committee report. Okay. The uh, Sewer Commission met last night here at the town hall. They discussed a a lien on one resident that hadn't paid sewer bills since 2007, and they have sent a certified letter out to the homeowner, uh, which has been received, but there's been no response, and the commission is tabling um, the decision about a lien until January, because that was the final payment date uh, for the resident. There uh, it was a survey sent out to residents of Pleasant Street, Westwood Street, Hermsdorf, Cushing, New Boston Road, West Union Street, Bog Road, Bell Street, as to their long-range plans for having sewer extended to that area. Um, One-third of the uh, residents have so far responded, and uh, they were not interested in having sewer extended because their uh, private septic systems are adequate. The uh, slope stabilization project uh, near Surrett Park on the uh, rail trail, soar, the soar line that runs on the rail trail in our area, there was one bid. And it was uh, approximately, uh, I don't have the figures here, I would say $70,000 over the grant amount available. So uh, the director of DPW is uh, pursuing whether FEMA will um, help out in the uh, by providing more money to be available in the grant. And the SOAR Commission will wait for that answer before selecting the, uh, accepting the bid. Anything else? Any other questions? Um, going back to the 250th anniversary committee, and uh, since uh, Chief Sullivan is here, we're going to need another a, a replacement rep for that, for that committee only because there's a lot of uh, things like traffic that we're going to have to deal with um, in terms of planning for it, whether it be parades. Um, I believe that there are certain committees, and I believe CERT has offered to um, 
undertake the uh, 250th anniversary parade, which is a good thing, as I think your relationship with with CERT, um, trying to uh, coordinate the logistics would, would work out pretty well. Um, but it would help to, to have somebody from police uh, attend every once in a while so that if we do have uh, questions. And the other thing, Sue, was um, any type of, uh, the fire department is working on a fireworks ordinance. And I believe Lieutenant Connor is what, talking to the chief about that. Um, I'm trying to think what else, if we needed any type of ordinance changes. I don't, I don't, I don't think we do. Um, St. Anselm's College has been pretty receptive to us in terms of holding some events. Ho however, um, they declined our request to ha hold fireworks uh, at St. Anselm's College. So we're talking about a plan B, and I know that the fire department is going to work with hopefully with PD and others to just what's another viable alternative. There was some suggestion about perhaps um, having them in the, in the village area where they would be uh, shot from Lions Field. And uh, they're, they're, I think the uh, Lieutenant Connor is going to work with some fireworks companies to see if that's possible. There aren't too many locations where where we can do it. But some of these events, um, you know, they they would require pro possibly rerouting of traffic, and so therefore, you know, having PD there um, would help. Um, I think that's pretty much it for committee reports. Is there anything else nobody has? Do you have another one? Um, did in your discussion did you? Uh, look into the uh, water precinct field? Um, we did talk a little bit about cemetery field and, and, that, and that, uh, that. Further, further down yeah. where the pre water precinct yeah. headquarters is. Right. Yeah, right now it would be just be a matter of the uh, whoever does the, uh, they, I think they want to be higher than, um, they want to shoot from a higher spot typically so you get more you know, arc or I, I'm not an expert in this, but that's what I was told. So the the elevated soccer field at Lions might 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 give them that opportunity. So um, I think that's about it for that one. And so we can start in with our um, budget discussions, and we're kind of back on schedule again. So if I could invite uh, Police Chief Pat Sullivan and any anyone who we'd like to join him um, for a police budget discussion. Welcome, Chief. try to make it fairly brief but concise and to the point. Um, I've prepared several proposals. Um, first looking at a level funded budget for the police department operations line. If I eliminated crossing guards for um, two thirds of the year, established a revolving account and I know the board has um, kind of shied away from this in the past but we could drop 40000 off of our operating line by establishing a revolving account this year and then every year after that we could eliminate the special duty line altogether and then I would keep the current vacant position of patrol open and that would equal $155,000 my target um, for a level funded budget is $154,000 so I'm just about $1,000 over in savings on that For a 10% reduction for the police department operating budget, I would eliminate the crossing guards, establish the result revolving account. I would eliminate medical calls, response, and supplies. That would save only $500, but it's a duplication of services currently provided by the fire department. Eliminate all parades, effective affects Memorial Day, the 250th, Halloween parade, and the Gosstown Gallop. That will save me $2,450. I would eliminate diversion. Uh, that's $4,500. However, the offsetting cost is that there's going to be further court time or more court time for officers when juveniles have to go to juvenile court versus diversion, which keeps them out of court and keeps my officers out of court. At that point, um, I'm to personnel. I have to, at that point, eliminate five officers for $262,771. On the other side of that, there'll be an increase in overtime, sick time, 
turnover and necess necessary vacation coverage. The coverage to co the cost to coverage five law officers is going to add up to about two hundred one thousand dollars. So I'm actually looking about a sixty two thousand dollar cut because if I have people that are on vacation, I can't not fill that shift anymore if I'm losing that many officers. I can't just say, okay, we'll run short because we're already short. I'm going to have to add it with overtime coverage. Same for sick days, same for personal days. At that point, I still need $208,000 to come up with. I would then eliminate three more officers for a total of eight officers. The result of that would be reduced response times as well as response to calls and the efficiencies that we currently see. After eliminating eight officers, I would reduce bulletproof vests by $3,000. I reduce the fuel usage by $15,000. Um, as a result of that is there'll be reduced areas patrolled. Currently, the officer that patrols Bernardville also patrols Black Brook Road area. If he's tied up in Bernardville all day and he's gone over his miles, and we're looking at 50 miles per shift, a 12-hour shift, he would not get up to the east parts to cover that day, depending on the call volume. I would eliminate animal control. Uh, we would no, han no longer handle animal complaints. Dead animals on the side of the road, they would stay there. Um, we wouldn't have the money to remove them or the people to remove them. Um, We'd also be able to reduce court overtime with eight less officers um, by about $7,500. Um, we could reduce training by 8,000 because of less staff. We could reduce uniforms by 3,500, less employees to outfit. Reduce employee development by 6,000, less employees to train. Eliminate pagers. Um, we'd use our cell phones. However, the downside is if you need someone for emergency management or something and we're out of cell phone or not being a coverage area, you're not going to get us. Um, go on, eliminate crime prevention programs and equipment. There'd be no interaction on a proactive basis with the community. We could save $8,000. Reduce vehicle maintenance line by 6500 With less police driving less vehicles, there'd be less use. We could reduce the part net time maintenance position by 13,000. We're a 24-7 agency. We'd have a building that's not being cleaned properly. Um, reduce re police retirement from the eight officers laid off for 40,000. That brings me to $362,085. The ramification of those cuts, those are the numbers. What happens is we would simply become report takers. We would respond to burglaries. We would take your information. We would not have the manpower to try to solve it. We would take the report and we'd move on to the next call. We would eliminate the SRO position. Um, while that's an elimination, it also ties up officers that are on the street to have to respond to the schools to handle those calls as well. Um, we currently officer car seat safety inspections for um, infant car seats. We install them, we show people how to use them properly. We would eliminate those. We would eliminate or reduce fingerprinting. We currently provide residents or the alternative of charging and doing them once a week. Um, we would eliminate vacant property checks. There's not enough manpower to do them. Um, eliminate response to medical calls, as I had mentioned. Restrict mileage to less than 50 miles in a 12 hour shift uh, to cut fuel prices. Um, and then there may be delays in mandatory investigations such as child abuse, sexual abuse, and done probably without someone that's been fully trained in that. Um, also, I would look to remove my detective division and move it into patrol for emergency response. That's what 10% will do to my police operations budget. Next question. Just a quick question. Chief, could we get a copy of that with the specific lines and the cuts that you're going to make dollar-wise? Certainly. Thank you. Chief, you didn't mention anything about um, command staff or support staff in any of these cuts, just officers. No, there was no... Absolutely. Our policy, our um, 
personnel plan says cuts will be made from the bottom up. So contracts that means contracts. contracts as well. So that means that I will be covering a patrol shift. I'll be covering a supervisor shift as the captain and the two lieutenants. So as far as taking part in such things as the 250th, there may not be anyone available to do those type of things. So that, not just that committee, but a wide variety of committees, rails to trail, highway safety, and the list goes on. Um, for the communications budget, to level fund that, um, what I took was from the um, submitted budget. It was lower than the default budget. Um, I need to reduce by $9,000. Um, pull up the glasses here. Um, through a reduction in the current wage schedule that we have, um, we have a newer employee. Um, that's already dropped. Um, overtime pay would drop uh, by 2000 We would drop FICA again by almost 1000 or excuse me, 500 Medicaid, retirement, unemployment, workman's comp. Benefits um, would increase slightly. Um, furniture we'd reduce by 1800 um, It all comes out, we got a $9,000 increase. I can level fund communications. For a 10% reduction in communications, I would have to eliminate two dispatchers. With the elimination of two dispatchers, that gives me $97,000. It's $27,000 more than I need. However, again, back with mandatory overtime, I need to fill those shifts. That $26,000 that I say would have to be put back into the overtime to cover sick times, holidays, because the people aren't there to move into those shifts when available. Question. Yep. With uh, two less dispatchers, uh, are we at risk of being able to Hand, handle the calls from other communities that we already have agreements with? The, the call volume? Without question, my biggest concern is being able with the call volume that Gosstown has, not being able to handle Gosstown calls. Um, the other night we had accidents left, right, and but sideways. But would we back out of those agreements? We would have to. Okay. Which is a loss of revenue? Yes. Excuse me. Wasn't your assumption, though, just that you would be filling those with overtime? Those positions, you'd have it's less 26, than twenty-six thousand. That twenty-six thousand wouldn't cover every all the coverage that I need. But if we're going to cut two dispatchers, that gives me twenty-six thousand more than I needed. Okay. It should go back in the overtime to cover where I can. Again. So um, how would you cover those? Oh, would you have they two would be dispatchers during the day? Absolutely one at night? not. Uh, we'd have to go probably to one dispatcher at a time with days off and everything else, one, um, and a supervisor if possible. Because I have one dispatch supervisor, and she would be placed into a supervisor position, <coughs> taken out of the supervisory role she currently handles. How many dispatchers do you currently have? Eight. And a supervisor? Yes. And there are two per shift, four not, shifts? Not How do you? We do 12-hour shifts, <coughs> and they work a very different schedule because there's a because they're not emergency personnel per se, they do, they have to work 40 hours in a week. So 12. <coughs> Only part of the day has two dispatchers. Yeah. Yes. Starting yeah. like if they uh, two or three o'clock in the afternoon on a straight one or two in the morning. Yeah, by two or two in the morning and I believe three on the weekends, we only have one dispatcher, three to seven. But up until that time, I have two. So I believe 20, roughly 20 hours, 24 hours. 20 to 19 hours out of the day, there are two dispatchers. That's based on historical call on, uh, data. And current call yeah, data, that's right. correct. Right. Any other questions? Do you have anything else? Anyone? All right, and you're gonna, you'll provide us with a copy of that? Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Next is Parks and Recreation Director Rick Walhemi. Good evening. 
After the last meeting, you all asked for a couple things. So if you would take this uh, organizational chart, pass that around, please. Pass. This is just more backup information that I might refer to. I'm going to keep a copy for Steve, who's not here. So. And this is, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then these are the, uh, the budgets that we will discuss tonight. Good to go. Nope, good to go. <laughs> oh, I went up to two. Good, we're going this far. Yep, yep. Oh, don't get confused. Uh-oh. No, That's where they, they have signs on the roundabout. Right Police have already been through. No, I didn't know I had to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have three packets from Parks and Rec, and the police chief just handed us um, his presentation. Three packets from. Yeah. Here's the third one. Okay. I only have one. I only have one. Mm -hmm. No, you're getting, them. you're getting them. You're getting them. I know we made enough. Coming. Coming. <laughs> must I know. Be more so down Christmas. There. Basically, after our last meeting that we had, uh, we showed you what um, the Parks and Recreation Department was requesting if we were to have an as-needed budget or whatever that <coughs> word is. Um, and we recall that that was a $54,000 increase. Um, I'd like to definitely remind and, and reiterate um, the assets that we have in this town are two parks, uh, Roy Park, Barnard Park, Sorette Field. Um, we have land. All of this is is, a, is an asset to this town, um, and it's definitely an important thing to take care of. Um, we have over 175 acres of land that we actually take care of. Um, and you figure Barnard is 22, Roy is 12, and Sorette Field is 35 acres alone, each of those having infrastructure, right. pools, pavilions, um, things that do need care, things that probably haven't had care in many years. Um, so this is a this is definitely a challenge. Um, we offer over 35, 40 different programs, activities for the community, um, each having decent participation levels, um, all basically free to the community for. for and the biggest one is our summer camp, our summer playground. I'm sorry, I call it a, in my world it's a camp, uh, <laughs> but summer playground, um, averaging 120, 140 kids a day. Um, very important program. Um, I just want that to be said and to be e reiterated again. And if you look at basically this information is packet right here that kind of just gives you some quick hitters on participation numbers and stuff like that. Um, this packet that I gave you will give you the um, organizational chart that you all wanted to see. And behind that is a list of the three different full-time positions within the Parks and Recreation and what each has for responsibilities. Um, Going into budgets, um, if you get if you take a look at those budget sheets right there, and I've labeled them budget F for a level funded budget, and then I labeled it budget E <laughs> for a 10% decrease. What we try to do as the Parks and Recreation Commission is to definitely look at what I just said, our assets, our assets are important to us, our programs are important to this community, and the community needs these programs. With that in mind, we had to respect the, the, uh, the demand of us to come level and to come 10%. If you look at level, the level budget F, you'll see we're at a $380,000 level budget, if you look at the bottom line. 
Uh, on the bottom of that, I put little notations, things that are affected with that. Um, to get to this level funded budget, what we basically did is we said, okay, uh, with the amount of repair that is needed at the Roy Park pool, close down the pool. Um, now that affects some 4,400 users of that area um, that use that pool over a course of 60, 70 days in the summertime. Um, where you save there is basically you're not going to have to supply five lifeguards. Uh, so you're going you're gonna to decrease your lifeguarding pool from 10 down to six lifeguards. So you save $17,900 there. You'll save some money in chemicals. You won't be using as many chemicals. Um, you'll save some money in the electricity side, the water side, um, that type of thing. Um, with this level funded budget, we would, we would stay with a playground staff as is, meaning two, two at each park. And actually what we would do is we would look at combining the parks the playground program to one park. Uh, since you don't have a pool, that's a big piece of uh, a playground program, summer program, we'd have them come over to the, the Barnard facility. Um, but we would have to maintain you know, four staff total for that program. Um, instead of have, where I said we had 10 lifeguards prior to all this, um, we'll, we'll delete four of them but with the volume coming back over to Barnard, we'll keep one, so that's why you have six. Normally you have five at each site. So you keep one, have them come over to Barnard. Um, the thing we did not even consider and factor in is, do you bus people over from Roy, from Pernardville? You know, I mean, that, that's a question that kept coming up with the commissioners. You know, we, do we offer a busing program to get them over here? I don't know. Will they drive over? I don't know. Um, you know, those are things to consider. Um, what we did with the level funded budget, understanding, as I said, our assets. Um, Barnard Pool still needs help. I mean, that, we can't throw our hands up and say, all right, we're closing down the Roy Pool because that has all these problems, which it does. You know, you need $7,000. You need two um, filter pumps that are on their last leg, um, they've been band-aided together as long as they can be band-aided. So there's seven grand in pumps right there. Um, I just recently wanted, I just had a um, pressure test done on the lines, the vacuum line skimmer lines at the Barnard facility and we do have some leaks in, um, in two, two sections of uh, two, two lines, two out of the four lines that come in. Um, have some leaks, so we're going to have to repair that as well. Um, and we do have, you know, the the um, bottom of the pool that we already knew at Barnard needs to be. That one just needs to be skim coated, resurfaced, because it's just chipping and falling apart. Um, slight leaks, not you know, not major leaks. Uh, so it is fixable. Um, so we have to keep that in mind. So we, we kept the, the pool operation line. We did increase that from the previous year. If you notice, um, you know, we upped it $5,000 um, and really nickeled and dimed and really cut that down and say, okay, the absolute needed things. We need that. We need two new filters. Um, we, we absolutely need lifeguard chairs. I mean, we're using these plastic chairs that are ground level and LGC, as I said, as they let you all know, came in and did an audit. They, that's not the appropriate system. So we need to get four chairs for that. Um, so th these are factored in there, is what I'm saying. Um, I think the line that hurts the most out of this would probably be the program line. And when I say program line, that's all your youth basketball, your soccer, your supply lines. Um, so what's going to happen is instead of we'll keep the... 32-year tradition of, you know, having kids wear a 12-year-old shirt for a, from a game previous, keep that going instead of buying new shirts and have them go home with them at the end of the season. We can keep doing that, um, keep that system going. Um, so, um, and um, 
the positions in this in this budget here as far as your program supervisor in your grounds keeper would would remain in this structure right here and still be a level funded budget okay if you go to the budget E which is going to show you a 10% decrease budget we would still have to keep the Roy pool closed so we close down Roy pool we'll have to look at making somebody part-time somebody's gonna have to become part-time you you don't increase your pool operation line so you can't fix your your Roy Park pool filter so maybe that doesn't maybe we run it get it as long as we can and if we have to shut down midsummer because it doesn't work anymore then that's what we do you know you can't you can't have your the proper lifeguard chairs so you're not you're not fixing any of your your problems you're you're getting through and covering your very minimal cost that you have so I guess that's kind of all that I really have I mean kind of is what it is open for questions thoughts concerns any questions any thoughts or concerns <laughs> I think you've I'm outlined sure. what, the, what the issues are so. anything from the board no thank you I know this isn't the type of news people like to present but it's an exercise that we have to do so oh, that's fine. Yeah. I like your presentation yeah. uh, very quickly uh, matching the, the monies and the mm -hmm. impacts all in one you know, few sheets thank you Rick yeah, thank you Rick easy to understand all right um, next is uh, we have Sue who will be going over the admin budget impact thank you. Um, first the organizational chart since you have been asking for those for everyone current staffing level at Town Hall we have oh. night At Town Hall, we have 19 full time employees and two part time employees. As you can see from the chart, um, several positions support multiple town departments. The finance office supports um, all departments processing payroll, accounts payable, accounts receivable. I'll say this for Steve. Um, Grants management, fund management, investments. IT maintains a townwide computer system at police, fire, DPW, parks and rec, and town hall. The building supervisor oversees maintenance of all municipal buildings, um, but his compensation is distributed over four largest departments. Also, uh, you'll note on our staffing chart that seven positions carry multiple titles and duties, and others are cross-trained to provide coverage um, for leaves. Uh, you also on that chart we added um, the after hour committee assignments for s some of the staff members and it's interesting because on September 1st another town had contacted me doing a survey of staffing levels at town halls and um, here were their results I had to take out some because um, Parks and Rec I guess in some towns is under admin so I deleted that since that's not part of us they did not measure um, building supervision sewer or um, IT maybe those are in other departments other than the town hall but um, they didn't measure those so if you compare to the common ones that we com they compared to the range was staffing in these town halls of comparable size six communities responded those six communities were uh, Bedford, Goffstown, Merrimack, Londonderry, Hampton, and Laconia. And the range of full-time employees in these town halls and these specific offices were um, ranged from 16 to 30 full-time employees. And yes, Goffstown had the lowest number of full-time employees at 16. The closest were two other communities at 18. And like I said, um, the high was Laconia, who is smaller in population than us, with 30. I thought that was interesting. 
but the reason we're here tonight is you asked what would be the impact of a level funded budget and what would be the impact of a um, 10 percent reduction in the budget in order to meet your request of a level funded budget at town hall we would need to cut hundred and nine thousand forty eight dollars if you analyze that um, only sixteen thousand of that were non personnel related cost so very little of that was um, it, it netted out I mean some items were over and some were under but um, only about 16,000 is non personnel related so there would be to get to level funded there would be four areas that I would be looking at one is furniture and fixtures in the finance line that was 20,000 we had placed 20,000 in there to establish a safe and secure revenue collection office which could accommodate all revenue collection positions at town hall and that all those collectors would be cross-trained to provide greater efficiency and coverage for leaves. The second area would be um, what I think believe the board has already done, freezing wages uh, for non-union personnel. At Town Hall, that's a reduction of $32,000. The board had decided to do this um, in, at the previous meeting uh, and also um, when at a later time decide whether or not to, to put on a special warrant article for any increases in non-union personnel the, th um, the third area would to be to budget all hourly full-time employees at town hall at 35 hours this would result in a savings of twenty one thousand dollars this would impact four employees two in the town clerk's office because they stay later to cash out so they would be closing uh, probably a half hour earlier to cash out um, and the other one um, the planning assistant currently provides staff support to the conservation commission that support would go away she would not be attending after hours and finally um, our executive secretary is at 40 hours because she covers the selectmen's meeting so either she doesn't cover the selectmen's meeting or we adjust her schedule by five hours a week the fourth area is eliminating uh, a part-time position um, of 28 hours a week and that would result in a savings of uh, forty thousand nine hundred and thirty five dollars since the work of this position would be redistributed to remaining staff in that office, then I would expect um, slower operations and processing applications and requests. Uh, when the economy improves and applications rise, then I think we would need to reestablish this position. That gets you to a total savings of 113935 slightly over the uh, 109 to reach level funding. Any questions on level funding before I go to the 10%? Sue, do you have a copy of that? No, I just have one. I will email everyone that okay. later. Any questions? No? You can continue. Okay. Impact of a 10% reduction. A temp uh, in level funded, that's a significant reduction in level of service. However, a 10% reduction in the department um, head budget would be extreme and would severely impact our ability to provide the services which are mandated of us. In addition to the cuts already listed under level funding, these would be the additional cuts to get to a 10% reduction because we need to get to about a total reduction, 220,000 to get to 10%. Uh, one, we would defer the preservation of vital records in the town clerk's office, 2,500 savings. Uh, under other general government, we reduce that um, by 10%, which is 2,660. Under other general government, and you can recollect, is Conservation Commission, HDC, Budget Committee, Town Report, and Newsletter, Wellness, Civic Ceremonies. The only question I had is we carried over the same amount in other general government for civic ceremonies this year, the 5000 for the 250th. I'm not sure if there's a, a request to continue that next year. If not, there could be a further reduction there. Have, has there been a discussion of the 250th on that? I, I think when we prepared the budget, we just carried forward the same number. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, eliminate the OPEB audit. This is the um, post employment benefit audit that we do, and that's $5,000. The result of that would we we'd get a qualified opinion on our annual audit. Um, it's my understanding the school decided not to do that, so they are not doing an OPEB audit. Um, 
four, amend the IT replacement plan for computers. Currently, we replace them every four years. So we'd have to extend that to five years. That may result in more computer maintenance. As a result of that, that would save $10,000. We'd have to eliminate the part-time custodial position at Town Hall. That would result in a savings of approximately $10,000. We'd reassign those custodial duties to our building supervisor, which would mean less maintenance work would get done at Town Hall. Um, and finally, we'd have to eliminate a full-time position, um, which would uh, result in savings of about 55000 and uh, would, that would probably be in the uh, result in longer lines for motor vehicle registrations. And in addition to that, um, we're assuming that we could get another 20,000 savings and lower than expected cafeteria rates and the cash out reductions. That's it. Any questions? None? No. Nick, any questions? We'll get a copy. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a copy of that. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. All right, our next thing, now we'll know on Monday with the health insurance. We should know on Monday, yes. Okay. They had a couple big decisions to make today at their meeting, um, and I didn't hear the results regarding, you know, their national health insurance and how it impacts the plans they're offering. All right. Is question? Yeah. Is there a final uh, information on how the insurance plans are impacted by changes or anything or not yet we no. had some discussion on that and wasn't clear as to certain things affecting the, the plans health care um, oh you're talking about the changes the, in the, in the, the national health, health insurance yeah plus. um it appears at this time that the major difference is going to be to um remove the copay for, for preventative care visits because the national health insurance says you don't have you shouldn't have you can't have copays for that okay so that would go away and they're still awaiting guidance on uh, coverage for clinical trials coverage okay but I think what I was referring to was some of the and I don't know if it was part of this discussion or not. Um, some of the other issues that we had with the uh, health insurance. Uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. So th those are things we were discussing today. Um, and, and some insurance companies are just saying, okay, we're not dealing with grandfathered insurances. We're just going to bring them all up to the national standard. Um, and there may be administrative costs to keep grandfather plans. So we, we should have more information on that by Monday. Yeah, I think that's where I'll... The administrative cost? Yeah. Right. All right. Um, <clears throat> next, next on our discussion is the budget development. And we have until a week from this Saturday to... At, at which time we'll be doing our presentations to uh, the budget committee with department heads. So between now and that period of time, we have to make a decision a as a board as to how we uh, want to how we want to proceed. And um, I, en I envision that we may need, you know, I hate to say it, but you know, if we need another meeting. Now will be the night to schedule another meeting. Um, my thought process was was that when we did our presentations, it was it wouldn't be anything that's very uh, very long you know if we, if we do a PowerPoint presentation it might be like four or five slides per department to try to keep it um, you know at a minimum and, and, and try to give guidance to the department so whereas parks and rec or library might take up a little less time you know police fire DPW admin might take up a little bit more time just due to the complexity of the departments and the monies well what I was getting when you talk about limiting it to four or five slides per department that might be tough in a couple of the departments because uh, they probably would need the slides to show calls for services. So that might be. Yeah, I, I guess I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to prevent having like you know. I mean, we we can certainly do more, but I think if we keep it at a certain number, 
um, and be. I'm, I'm just saying, let's be practical with it. I mean, nobody nobody wants a PowerPoint of like 35 slides, and it just no. Puts and you I sleep, agree, so. but I just my whole um, concern was trying to restrict it to four or five, right? When you might need nine or ten, right? And um, the other thing that that you that we can do, you know, prior to that is that if if departments want to, you know, to kind of go back into you know history and say, okay, here's what. Um, programs might be or calls for service and, and try to show, demonstrate, okay, here's what the demand has been for services over the last five years or ten years. That can be done even independent of slides, you know, that can just be a piece of paper that kind of shows uh, shows that, which I think is somewhat, you know, helpful. I, I always like to look at five and ten year trends, you know, myself. Yeah, that might be a good point of guidance if we're using numbers. Right, data, you know, to yeah, make that it should go back three or four yeah. or five years uh, yeah I'd say a minimum trends. of three you know if you can go back even further that would be if you if you have that data um, and you know so I we're all doing the same is three an acceptable three-year history acceptable uh, for each department personally I, 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 I like I, three would be a minimum I mean I would I personally think five and ten years is better but um, that's uh, what do you guys think I think five for me, five would, would, would be would be a suitable no, I, I, number. I think five. I think yeah. five because you start going back ten, you could get you things could get are different. Ex yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You spend more time explaining the differences, and you and know that you didn't have pickleball back then mm -hmm. ten years ago. And maybe those can be put into a handout. Right, that's what I'm saying. If it's needed, right. versus slides. Right, that's, that's what I'm saying. A handout. Right, because the one thing is we want to have something in hand to be able to write on. So whatever they. Have we should have in paper right. copy as well. well. Whenever you do a slide presentation, you always have handouts anyway. Yeah. Note copies. Um, so I guess you know we can have this discussion now as to what we want the department heads to pr provide to give them a head start. And if you want to start on a fact sheet, we can we can do that, and then we can we can have some discussions about what guidance we want to give them as a board. Um, you know we've we've heard that we've heard what the consequences of level funded budgets are and 10% reductions and uh, you know now is where the rubber meets the road and I think we have to um, start to make some make some decisions here any recommendations for guidance we did that last week well, we talked a little bit about freezing salaries with with a, with a special article for wage increases for non-collective bargaining unit members, employees. Um, we talked a little bit, a little bit on, on the health insurance side. I'm talking about specifically with budgets. You know, do we? You know, we were we were given the charge by the budget committee to take a look at what a 10 percent reduction would look like. We asked to see what a level funded budget would look like, and we also asked them in the beginning what was the budget that they needed. Um, so I think you can see when you when you go with a level funded and you go with a ten percent reduction, more and more gets you know kind of peeled off. I'm sorry, but I still have to ask this question, and I ask this question I think almost every meeting. I keep hearing that we've been charged by the budget committee come up with a 10% budget and we were supposed to get a letter from the budget committee I mean here we are going to make budget presentations to the budget committee with the department heads in two weeks we've never gotten a letter from the budget committee so I guess I wh wh where are we with yeah. this I we mean, no, is we this have not, a request yeah, we have not I gotten still not I'm still not and I'm sorry I'm still not clear is this a request is this a requirement? Is this a demand? Is this a charge? W what What is it? I'll bring up the minutes, but it's it's reflected in their minutes. Um, Scott, may I ask you a question yeah. while you're looking that up? Yep. The numbers that we've been looking at from the different department heads on the salary side and benefits does that ref does those numbers reflect any increases? I'm assuming department heads cut whatever was in their department head request, right? So the department head request did have increases in it for wages. The original budget. Yes. They didn't 
Right. But the one that's entered, which number did you work off, though? The one that was the original number? It was a reduction from your original request, correct? Your original request had a 2% COLA and steps right. for non-union. Okay. It was a 10% off of the number nine request I did. So I managed the COLA and everything else. Well, it's 10% off of last year's right. number, so. Okay. Because I think last week we talked about we're going forward with a budget with zero increases in any of the right. benefit line, and that would be a special article right. for any. I just wanted to make sure everybody's working off the same. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, just give me a second here. I mean, I, I, I acknowledge that we didn't get a letter, I mean, which we have not, but I just want to know, you know, everybody know what the intent was. And the, the intent, hold on. Read from the budget committee. I'm going to read right from the minutes. Which minutes? Uh, June, hold on, 10th or something, I think. Hold on. Your minutes, the board's minutes. No, no. June budget 15th, committee. budget oh, okay. committee. Sure. Just bear with me. Okay, this is the last motion because there were several of them. Amended motion, um, G. Karen moved to recommend that the budgets be a minimum of 10% less than their current budgets. The 10% is inclusive of all budgetary appropriations, seconded by I. Beliveau. Um, Guy is talking about all Warren articles that would end up being part of the budget. Um, John Burt offered comments in a meeting which, with each department head to show them how easy it, would, it could be done. The includier could not do this, but as a private citizen, you may speak with any department head. Keep him separate, separated if you go beyond the scope of what the committee assignments are. Debate mode is to give your opinion and try to sway others. You need to stick to the topic. Um, so that was what the motion was, and I'm not going to read all the, there's so many comments here, but um, that's that motion passed, uh, hold on, 11 in favor, one opposed, and two abstained, myself and Dan Cludy are abstained. And just just con, uh, correction, uh, make sure I heard what you said, that one of the budget committee members said 10% could be easily cut from the departments? Yeah. And that's what we've been going through with 10%, and it's a drastic change in the departments from what I'm seeing here. And I just find it interesting that we've been having this discussion now on a weekly basis with the department heads here every week at a selectman's meeting and there are no budget committee members present here for this discussion and this of how one budget committee member said that you could easily cut 10 percent and that's what we're going through and there's nobody here for this discussion besides selectmen and department heads and the department presentations have not been uh i wouldn't have coined them as being easy cuts that, that was my point thank you I'm not the only one that looks at it from that perspective, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I did, like I said, there's, you know, there was, I, I'm not going to read the minutes. The, the minutes are online for any for you or anybody else to I read. Um, you know, there are some members of the budget committee that think it's relatively easy to do. Others don't think it is. Others think that it's a bottom line. Um, is a bottom line 10 well, percent I, I know and that's very easy to say when you're just looking at numbers but when you do that for the people who has to manage the budget and administer the budget it's a different story so you know and the, the one thing that i would say is that with a 10 percent um you know and this is the but i'm but the point i made that night was a 10 percent bottom line to the town budget or a 10 percent bottom line to the school budget if hypothetically you don't touch three or four departments, that means that whatever um, savings you need in that department has to get transferred to another department. So hypothetically, if you, from what I'm seeing here, let's say nothing was done with Parks and Rec, that means you'd have to then take the monies, that 10% difference, and you'd have to then put it on to the other departments, police, fire, DPW. And if you only did half admin. of what, what we needed to do for PD to get the 10%, so instead of 
eight or nine officers that she's talking about. We only do four officers. Then that means that difference has to go to some other right. department. Then there are, you know, again, just to, um, I want to, you know, present, you know, the, the, the debate that, that night was, you know, there are some who said, you know what, this is a target. It, you know, this is what we should be shooting for. It might not end up like that. Um, there were there were uh, many there. I, there was others that I got the impression that 10% was maybe not doable, um, that it would be a, a number far less than that. And then there were some other members who were looking more at 20%. So um, I just I just want to try to portray you know what what the conversation was. Um, and again, they are you know they're an elected body as as are we. So. Um, that's kind of kind of where we you know where we stand here. Um, where do we want to go from here? I mean, we have to give guidance. Um, do we we can do it tonight? We can do it another night um, in a workshop type setting with department heads to try to uh, do this thing. Um, where does everybody stand? Well, I, I guess a couple of questions though that I I would have perhaps for some discussion. I mean, uh, what we've gone through, is there any department that anybody here feels uh, could take a 10% cut? I mean, uh, that's not the way I, take I'm sorry to the way I word. Right. Any department could take a 10% right. cut, but I guess I'm also looking at it from a responsible. I mean, you know, there's two ways to approach a budget, number one, uh, you want to just cut a number, and all you're doing is looking at a number. And the other thing is that that has to be responsible. I mean, there's a uh, uh, you have to have a responsible budget. How, how are you going to run the town? I mean, if we're going to do this all with administration, I mean, are we going to start? People come here to pay the taxes and. They can't pay the taxes because either there's a line and they can't wait because they have to go back to work or have to pick up their kids or something. Uh, I, I mean, how, how are we going to operate? So I guess the question is if we just go through each department, I mean, can Parks and, can, can parks and Rec, uh, is there any member here that wants to see Parks and Rec have a 10% budget? Uh, the, the strange thing is that, um, I know this might sound nutty, but I, I know I put out a plea last week or the week before, you know, Send me an email. Let me know what you think. I've gotten none. You haven't gotten one? I've not gotten. I don't know if any other board member has gotten an email. I have gotten not one email from a resident as to, you know, what they feel about services, pro, con, either way. Um, so, you know, now I have heard from some people who, you know, in conversation that, that don't want to see drastic budget cuts, that they want to see their services maintained, but I have not gotten one email. I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but... Um, and I have solicited that, and I still do. Um, go onto the town's website. Our, all of our email addresses are there, and um, you know, fire away. Yes, Nick. Just going back to what you asked earlier, and I'm a little bit confused. The um, you were saying about setting up another workshop to give department heads guidance, and I guess where I'm confused is what other work do they need to do? They came back with their zero budget. They came back with a 10 percent below and I think what you had said last week is that when we go before and do our joint presentations they're going to be presented with two budgets the budget that the board of selectmen determines and the department head will give right. their budget and I, so I guess what other yeah, work does work, the department have, have have I guess where I'm where I'm going from it maybe it speaks to to Phil's point is that uh, this board can go in and say hypothetically we're looking for a level funded or a one percent increase two percent increase two percent decrease and it'll be all across the board or we could go back and after hearing all these different things saying, you know what, again, hypothetically, I think admin could stand to, to, to go down 5%, but I don't think PD could. Or I think that the parks and rec could, but the library can't. Mm -hmm. and that's what. But that's our job. That's our think. job. Right. And that's what I'm trying I to say is, but when you do that, then you have to give, you know, guidance to a department head to say, okay, you have X amount of less money to work with here. I, th I think the board has heard from all the department heads, and I think it's time to discuss what your goal is. What, what kind, what budget do you want to propose to the budget committee, and then develop it? And we can, I can do a worksheet for Monday night's meeting when we have the 
put in the right cafeteria rate, so you'll have that information. We'll put in the frozen wages you already decided on, the CIP cuts you have already discussed, and then all the other blanks you can fill in on Monday night. But I think you need to have that discussion, what your goal is, where do you want to be, what kind of budget do you want to present bottom line to the budget committee. Yeah. I, yes, David. I propose that the, the members of this board would take on their individual departments and responsibilities and, and make the f essentially the first motion of where their department's budget would, should be as the first step. And that would, we would feed that data uh, Monday sometime in the Sioux. Uh, hopefully it'd be ready for that evening. And that would be uh, the first complete budget that we would then discuss. And in my case, I would make certain recommendations on DPW. Um, the rest of this board may accept a few of those, may disagree, may want to add, but that would be the start of our discussion. And we would have one document with all the values in it. If we could, if we could each do that with our own departments. Phil? Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess the only thing that I wanted I thought or uh, to just c get a kind of a feeling on the board's perspective as what what we've been presented with on on uh, like 10 percent cut okay example. well I, I don't beat around the bush I'm not gonna be around the bush I'll give you my opinion I, I think the 10 percent reduction is uh, is too drastic um, in terms of its consequences for the community, and I wouldn't support it. And a after hearing all of the, the different presentations, um, they would be, I, I think it would be uh, foolish for us to, to go in that direction simply because um, I, don't, I, don't, I think we lose more than we would ever gain. That's just for, for the long term. And, and I, I agree with you, and that's where I was getting about with a responsible budget, okay? Because if you take PD, for example, okay, and we start cutting four or five officers out of the police department budget, okay, when you take that, that cut, okay, even a 5% cut in the police department, I'm just saying because it's half at a 10%, so just, you know, using a number. So you take that out relating to four or five officers, as the chief pointed out, we, there's certain things that we can no longer provide, okay? One of those things providing is vacant property checks, okay? Now, if you start and you, and you, some of the things in the past of, uh, and you look as, well, how did that department, and, and again, this is going from, from uh, uh, David's perspective on each one's uh, department because that happens to be the department that I'm working with this, uh, at, this, at this moment. How did that department get to where it is? Over the years, they've always had the community uh, surveys that were done what pl people liked of the, of the community, what they liked of the department, what their expectations are, and what they would want to see. People always like to be feeling safe and come up and right, But in, in fairness, though, on those surveys, I don't think that any of the survey questions said about attached dollar amounts for this. No, no, no. And everyone, well, everyone, well, you well, answer. Scott, but where I'm going from, okay, where I'm going from is I'm not saying attach it, but what they, what in the community, okay, uh, 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 a safety in the community, okay? Feeling that uh, where, where crime is, okay? So what what the chief does as an operating department in conjunction with the Board of Selectmen takes these things, okay, and develops this to make something for the community. And that's what the other departments do. I mean, that's why when you look at Parks and Rec, we have two pools. That's why we have uh, Surrett Field. I mean, we took a landfill, we made it into, into fields and a park, okay? There are a lot of things that were developed. People are attracted to Goffstown. What makes Goffstown Goffstown? One of the things is it's a safe environment, okay? So you go away now and your house is empty, you can no longer have a, a, a vacant property check, so, okay? Because we don't have the office to do that. So what does that do? It affects, it affects your safety. Now you wanna know something? So you cut the police department by five five percent my taxes go down $100, but you know something? My house gets broken into while I'm away. 
Well, after the house is broken into, I would pay $1,000 not to have it broken into. It's after the fact. No, and I, I, I just want to kind of give everybody just a little bit of uh, some background. In years past, and Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, but in years past when Selectman um, level funded the tax rate, that was they were able to do certain things such as wage increases, health in, uh, insurance increases, fuel increases, because you had an increase in your valuation, which in some cases and was revenues. One, and revenues right. from yeah. one to two percent. So you had those revenues, and you were able to sustain some of those other increases without it affecting the taxpayer. But in the last year or two, um, even three, our revenues have been relatively flat. And um, valuations and, have been flat. And valuations have been flat. So now you don't have that money drawing into it. So in order to sustain wage increases, health insurance increases, the only thing you can do is you can increase your property taxes or you now have to reduce your operating expenses or other expenses, capital expenses, to try to make up for it. And what we've done historically is, you know, the last few years that I've been on the board is we've deferred some bigger ticket items, fire trucks, garbage trucks, uh, et cetera, roads in some cases, and um, to, in order to kind of sustain that. And um, so now we're, we're still in that era of flat revenues um, and flat uh, uh, valuation. So the only, so when I look at, and I look at a level funded budget, a level funded budget now in the year 2010, 2011 is much different than the level funded budget, um, le level funded tax rate that the selectmen uh, stro uh, strove for back in probably the mid 90s or year 2000, simply because you had other, you had revenues coming in to offset some of these expenses. So, in essence, to put it simply, is a level funded budget now, level funded tax rate, shall I say? is um, what, it, what it's doing is, which is essentially the same in this situation, it's, it's actually, it's a cut. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because we have costs that are going up, but yet we're, we're keeping the same amount of money. So I don't want folks thinking that, oh yeah, we, you know, uh, we're just, we keep, we're keep going as business as usual. It's not. In the last couple of years, we've, we've had to, you know, make different cuts along the way. And this year is no different. So even to achieve level funded, it's going to be, a decrease in, in services. So I'll just speak for myself. I'm shooting for a no increase in taxes, a level funded budget. Um, and I know that that might be difficult for us to achieve, but that's where I'm shooting for as a target. And um, I don't think that the 10% having gone through the exercise um, is the way to go for the short term, medium term, or long term of the community. And um, that's my two cents. Anybody else want to weigh in? I'll say the same. I think we went through this exercise last week, and I said this basically the same thing. That's that's my target: is a, um, a zero tax rate increase. I'd like to look at all of the numbers and all of the lines, and you know maybe you mix and match, and where that the specific department comes are going to probably be varied, as you say. There, the, that tax or that lack of tax of budget increase because I don't want to say it's a cut because it's still an increase in budgets in order to yeah but uh, will be varied it's not going to be the same across the board for all the departments right. and I'm not looking to make the town unsafe or to have buildings burning without fire department to respond or but I think the reality is to some degree there will be some changes in service I don't know how you can stop the increases in salary lines and, and those things that naturally go up, not raise the tax rate and still maintain the status quo. I don't think it's possible. I think our job is going to be finding that balance. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to elaborate what we talked about in non-public session, but it has to do with legal, and our legal line is going up, 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 and away. I mean, we, the town, <laughs> believe it or not, for those of you who may not know, we do get sued. Um, and we get some sued many times for what one consider kind of silly things, um, uh, and you name it, it, it range it, it ranges the gamut. And you know we have to prepare you know for that. And that line has I think it's doubled in the last three years, the legal line. Whether it's people suing planning board decisions, zoning board decisions, code enforcement decisions, um, HDC. taxation, HDC, the list goes on and on. And um, 
that's not something that we have a whole lot of control over, and we and we have to defend these things. And and that bill is getting close to well over a hundred thousand dollars, I think. Um, so, and we're also looking at uh, la labor negotiations. Right. So, I think everyone is, is under the understanding that this is a difficult task for department heads and the board of selectmen to to try to do this, and there are consequences to it. And it's not going to be business as usual, but we're going to try to make it as uh, palatable as possible for for the for the community, knowing that yeah, things are going to have to they're going to change a little bit. Um, I guess my question for the board is that um, I don't know uh, where the two of you stand in terms of, of level funded or or an increase or decrease or whatever it may be, but it goes back to what I was saying before. We're going to have to make that decision. Are we going to fix the uh, Roy Park pool or are we going to go with plan A or B for Sue's folks or the police department? Where are we going to take this thing? Because that's where it really that's that's our charge you know is to try to is to try to come up with that that balance um, but I think what we need to try to focus in on is what is the target mm -hmm. okay so Nick and I have shared that the target is a level is level funded um, no increase in the tax rate so that's that's two we need to try to and not putting words it's but if I remember correctly that was select and Fournier's position yeah, I'm just I just I, we have to give them you know some sort of direction um, as to where we're going um, with that. And then now's the time to speak up. I mean, this is the. Is there, yeah. You mentioned that the unusual circumstances of this year compared to previous years, where assessments would rise, revenues would rise a tad bit and, and the net result might be a flat right. tax rate. If those situations don't aren't favorable and you want to maintain um, the same services, then yes, the tax rate is going to go up. Um, I, I would l be willing to discuss a, a not flat, but some increase it might be one two or three percent I think in the years gone by it's been six to seven but something less than what it has typically been could be a, a good position for this board that allows some some growth in overall in the budget but it would be varied among the departments Okay. I, I just don't want to be as stern as you're being. Okay. That's that's the beauty of our form of government. We all have our opinions, so. But I think some of the things that we should look at, uh, uh, some of them we've looked at in the past, such as special revenue fund for special detail and the rest of that. Um, we've had discussion on that in a couple of other instances in other departments. I think there's one in admin, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong, but a couple of other of, of these issues. Well, maybe not specifically a revenue fund, but there's certain things that are in certain departments that perhaps should not be in those departments, but historically have been there, and they skew that particular department. So perhaps by looking at some, some of these things and uh, perhaps uh, addressing them individually or separately might also be something. I, I guess... You know, the concern that I have, again, speaking for the department that I've been working with, this one particular department has two labor contracts to be negotiated. So right there alone, it's got double the, the, the legal fees because it's dealing with two contracts. So how do, you, how, how do you add that increase to that department with a level fund when there, there's an item that it's getting tw twice as much put in as a couple of the other departments and yet to, to level fund it. So I think David has a point. I mean, uh, let, let's face it, electricity goes up. Every expense, just like every homeowner, every business in the town, because we operate the town, fuel, uh, propane, everything goes up. Service contracts for the, for the generators, every, everything. I mean, it doesn't go down. Um, then again, what pays for this 
or taxpayer dollars. Um, so there does have to be a balance, but I, 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 don't have a need, I don't have a problem with a target as a level fund, but also have to take into consideration sometimes that in one or particular department there might be, as was mentioned before, uh, y y you might have to have some kind of an exception, but looking at, some, at that revenue fund for special detail uh, is, might be something for us to Can consider. I have a question on that, yeah. Sue. How does that save us? Because you don't have to budget for right. it. Money goes in, money goes out. Because you're you know. budgeting for something. Yeah. But it's offset by revenue. Right. So when they have the gross appropriate. So it's a wash. It's, it's a wash. It's a right wash, but the, but the, but Doesn't it doesn't affect the tax rate. No, but you're looking, we, when you're looking at a budget in a department for an increase, it's got to be budgeted because it has to be gross appropriate so it's in that number. The only time you run into a problem is in years when you exceed your budget for a special detail. And Which then we've it done. impacts. But the bid, because typically. And you adjust your revenue anyway when you right. go to shop the tax rate. Correct. But I guess if I may continue, the um, currently when we receive money for a special detail, is it a one a dollar for dollar or does the town recoup an, an more dollars right? than what it costs us? In other words, if we send an officer out for five hours, do we just get the salary for five hours, or is there We're an increase? We're not allowed cost? to make a profit on anything. But there isn't. So. You are an admi admi administrative That's allowance. Do we get a right? dollar for dollar, or is it more than a dollar? I would guess it would be more than a dollar, right? But right now, with the uh, five percent that very for little. retirement, um, is very less so now very than ever. Was almost flat. You say five percent for retirement? Well, on the changes on retirement for special detail. Well, what I, I would assume our rates, our right? Rates, our rates yeah. would have to go up to reflect. We need that. to ref do that. Yeah. Meaning that that's not what we're doing. Right. Yes, David. On that point, is there a time lag when you implement this in the first year? You have to pay your salaries next week. However, the money coming in to the fund may be 90 days behind. Mm -hmm. So, is there? Presently, I'm budgeted. I believe it's at 75,000. I would look at 40,000 on the budget. Still budget. Thank you. And the following year to be renewed all the way. Mm -hmm. So you'd be Time looking at way. 40 out of the budget this year and 35 out of the budget next year. If we're going to set up a separate fund, you better put in an administrative fee to, yeah. to offset finances, hours to manage it. And then what happens to the excess balance? At the end of a year after you've paid it your salaries. stays in the revolving fund. Mm -hmm. Chief, you want to? You want to? If you want to come up here, you're more than welcome. If you'd like to use to what buy equipment, costs, right? Um, traffic vets, right. but it's all at the discretion of the board of selectmen. It's really the board of selectmen. I would come before you and say, I now need 20 traffic vets. I have this amount in the revolving fund that is in excess. Can we use it? Does that go year by year? What do you carries mean? over. It does the because of the revolve, so it does. It's a non-lapsing non fund. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a question. Uh, if I may. So instead of looking at that excess as additional budget dollars, could it be used for the following year to reduce a budget line, as, you're, as you were saying? In other words, if your bulletproof vest line was, say, 50000 and you had twenty five in that revolving. It has to do with Safety. special detail. It has to be Safety related to special for detail. For the detail itself. Equipment could, needed for special detail. For instance, you could purchase a cruiser if you're going to use a cruiser at a detail, and this is long term because you need a lot of money to accumulate, but you could say, okay, a cruiser is at a detail on occasion. We could purchase a cruiser. We could not go purchase firearms. Right, okay. You might so be able to take a percentage the, towards a cruiser. Right. But so the practical sense is there is a reduction in the general fund yes. for that ex excess. There, there could be. It depends how you structure your rate, and it depends if if it's even like it is now. There's not going to be much money left over. Two minutes mm -hmm. coming. All right, we're, um, we digress just a bit. Um, Thank you. Well, Selectman Fournier is, is not here this evening. Um, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth. I, th I thought that, that he was 
he talked last week about level funding. Maybe I'm, I'm off, but he's not here, so we're not going to go down that direction. But um, hearing what I think three of us said, the, the goal would be would be level funded, and that might not pertain to every department. Is that what you said, Phil? As a goal, but there might be exceptions. There might be a minor exception, and when I say a minor exception, I'm not saying a three or four percent increase in the department, but there might be a $35,000 item that really needs to be in there. And it, I mean, I, I, depending on, on the size of the department, it's going to affect a percentage wise. Right. I mean, you know, $35,000 of Parks and Rec is going to be a bigger percentage increase than 35000 for right. DPW. All right. Um, that, that being said, let's talk about next steps. Um, Do we? How do we want to approach this now in terms of working with our department heads? So, yeah. following up on uh, what they said, I mean, if we work with our our department and have that discussion with our department heads, you know, for to a target a level fund and see if we can come up with a level fund. And let's say I'm working with my department head, and like I said, I've mentioned there's there's two labor contract negotiations. How much money is for the legal fee? So maybe I couldn't come up with a level fund, but I need this extra amount because we, I happen to be dealing with. No, but I think we're going to hear that. One of my concerns is that I'll hear that from the library. Yeah, we're only two percent above, and it's only thirty well, something thousand dollars. Two percent might not and, be acceptable. You know, compared to, to the DPW budget, that's that's a drop in the bucket, or any of those other departments. And I'll hear the same thing. I got to fix the Roy Park pool, and that's, you know, I, I think we just need to. You know where where are we going? You know with this, and that's why I mean, like I said, we can do a workshop on this. We can we can have that discussion now. Um, you know, we can wait till second Fournier gets gets back. But it, time is of the essence. I mean, we don't have much time. I um, would suggest next Monday night yeah. we should do just a workshop, budget workshop, yeah. and work all of this yeah. out yeah. and put off any other. Business. Yeah, you're exactly. Yeah. Don't put anything on the agenda unless it absolutely has to be on the agenda. And maybe also take Slough and Pierce's suggestion in, in between meantime. now and then meet with our department oh, heads yeah. and, and yeah. come in with our own. If you add it to me, then I can put it all in one document, a worksheet to work so with. Right. And, and, here, and here's the other thing, too, is that here are some of the unknowns. And, and you know, to the, to the person in the audience, that, that may not – I mean, the health insurance can, can be a huge number. Mm -hmm. I mean, we budgeted 15 percent. If it comes in at – I think it's going to be lower. Okay, but if it, I let's can tell you but we that. don't okay, but we, we don't know. I don't know if it's 14, I don't know if it's 10, I don't know if it's 8, but that's thousands of dollars, you know. Um, so those are the types of things that are, you know, that are unknown at, at this point. So, but once we know you're those a, you're a silver bullet. <laughs> well, once we know those numbers, that's when we can, you know, that's when you really can, yeah. you know, plug some things in. So is that the approach we want to take? Everybody will meet with their department heads between now and next Monday, and um, the target is level funded, and um, move from there. I, I can do that and present level budget, and then here are three items that I feel, from my perspective, must be added. And here are all the items that were presented by my department that I rejected. Now, if you wanted to delve into that bucket and use well, it, well, I think I think, I think I think we're going to have to yeah. have those discussions. Yeah. So. But, yeah. but at least so. uh, that's it, it's on the table at that point. Yeah. Uh, what I chose and what I didn't chose, and then this board can uh, examine all those choices. All right, is everybody okay with that approach? And that's the approach we will take. Um, I will. Uh, I'll let Steve know. Steve mm -hmm. has uh, Parks and Rec. And, uh, Sue, when would you like these figures available uh, for your Excel spreadsheet input? Monday morning, <laughs> the latest. Like nine o'clock Monday morning. Yeah, that would be nice. Eight o'clock would even be better. Eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One question. Yes. One quick question. Yeah. Uh, last week or the week before, you mentioned something about a request to look at <coughs> EMS. Provisions. EMS. And I know the chief had emailed us some stuff 
Um, is it budget related? Yeah. Well, maybe not. EMS in terms of what? Private ben service. Vendors. Correct. Vendors. Oh, oh, you were talking about the report for the private ambulance service. Correct. That, is that, that was one thing that came up, and we, we we talked about how a study was done. What, like, cheap three years ago, four? Maybe that, probably two years ago. And, um, and we looked at it at that particular time, and it, it was not cost effective, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, do do we know? Was it? I guess my question is, is that should we be looking at this thing again, and that's a thought. The question and, and taking a look at it again in, in current days market. Are there now? Are there any vendors that? I mean, we know. I think last time the chief it was Rockingham, correct? Wasn't that the one that we did a? Uh, there, there was one, and that was Rockingham. It just may not be in the area. It took longer. Okay, so who's the new show in town? AMR. 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 They bought Rockingham out, or no? No, they're just still another. there. They just they don't have the nine one one service in Manchester. Okay. So have they ever come to us before and said, "Hey, we'll give you a price," or? They they haven't come to the fire department. No, and it's it's something that. Uh, Obviously, was looking looking at the way we do business for for EMS is we have a special revenue account as we were discussing right. for like details that whenever we transport somebody and we bill for our services, uh, that money goes into that special revenue account that helps pay for the equipment, right. the ambulance, uh, pays for personnel costs and so on. So it's almost a self sustaining project. And uh, years and years ago, you'd have a private private vendor that would. Would may offer come in and, and do do the service for nothing, um, but for our call demand, where we we need two ambulances to be available, um, similar to what Milford went through uh, several years ago, uh, it was going to cost uh, like say the town of Milford anywhere from four to six hundred thousand dollars a year for the town to pay this private service to provide ambulance ambulance coverage, and on top of that, they would have to hand over all their EMS assets, assets to this company, yeah. and it's, it's we've truly invested into into our own ambulance service for years and years. Uh, it started with Gemsa and has moved on to the fire department. Now in the evening, so we do like the, uh, we have that our own ambulances. We have per DM people do it. Now does this thing take place? Do, do they, do they have communities that do that, you know, say only in the evenings they bring their own stuff in or how does that work? I don't know of any During the daytime we use our own and nighttime we use our own uh, equipment. Right. And and again at night while our while our part time crews that are being they're they're being paid from this So we bill on this them account. Anyway. Yeah, right. we're we're billing for our services so they 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 make up for, for the cost of having that crew. Um, I don't know of any community in the state that splits their services up um, to cover certain daytime hours. Okay. The trend, the trend is uh, without a doubt, fire departments are taking over um, the duties of EMS uh, more than ever um, because they see the dual ro the benefits of the dual role of the fire department and the ambulance. Um, it's in communities that that currently that have private ambulances are are exploring. Uh, taking it over themselves. That includes departments in the state. All right, any other questions? Do we? What? Uh, I would feel it would be good if this board would schedule a backup day in case we don't resolve everything we would like to resolve on Monday night. I agree. And we need to pick a date for next week. Yep. <laughs> Go to, I'm gonna look at the I'm, town calendar here. I'm good Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We shy away for Thursday, <laughs> is my regard. Mm -hmm. um, Scott will take notes. Friday. <laughs> It'd be the very, 22nd. very well, abbreviated. Next Tuesday is the budget committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um. Which is, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I mean, I don't have to make that. I mean, we're doing the budget anyway. And uh, we have Parks and Rec in the library on the 20th. 
Thursday is open, actually. Yeah. It's the only open day. available Thursday. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind doing it, Wednesday. you know, Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Night? It doesn't matter. I mean, we have to get it done. So, what do you what What do you guys prefer as a backup? Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesday, or Wednesday. Yeah. What? Tuesday, Stay away Tuesday, from. Tuesday uh, probably could be a problem for me. Because I I believe Thursday and Friday administratively we're right, trying I to agree. get a package. Mm -hmm. Let's. Yeah. You want to shoot for the for the twentieth? Then we'll shoot for. Uh, I don't know. What do we have? Do. Eight o'clock twentieth, right? We have a meeting. Yes, Put it negotiation. In the, at night? No, in the morning. Uh, you want to shoot for Wednesday the 20th then, at night? What time? Uh, seven, six, well, six o'clock here. Give us more time if need be, six o'clock. Only if it's needed, right? Only if needed, yeah. backup. Budget workshop uh. if needed. All right. Maybe I'll get that letter on the, the 19th. I'm gonna write it out for you. I'll just have Dan sign it. A what? <laughs> oh, a letter. Right, well, it's Scott, you know. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, I know we have non. Uh, we have one bit of non-public that Sue mentioned land. So uh, with that, I think we're we've been. Just take a quick break. Well, uh, what we'll do is we'll um. We'll. We won't come back into session. We won't come back into public session. We'll go right into non-public session. We'll just be done so the viewers don't have to come back. So with that, if we could just, if we could, uh, I'll, well, I'll go into non-public and then from there we'll take the break. No, that's, that's okay. motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91A, 3, second. 2A, excuse me, 2 D. D, which is land, okay. uh, Phil seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, four, zero, and then a roll call vote. Yes. 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 Okay. So um, for all intents and purposes, folks, the public part of the meeting is going to conclude. The board will take a five or ten minute break, and then we'll finish up our non-public session regarding land, and we'll be done.